Hi, my name is Travis and this is Dev Tips. A few weeks ago I made a video called CSS Units. And the things that we're gonna be talking about this week are directly related to what we talked about that week. So you might wanna go back and check out that video already if you haven't, or not, I'll never know. But coding Santa will. He's making a list. In that video, I covered all the different types of units that you could follow a number with in CSS. So things like pixels, inches, uh, VH, percents, uh, M's, REMs, all that kind of stuff. And in the comments, I got a really great question that I think would make for a great discussion today. Giorgio asks, Yo Trav, if you had to choose one, or which one would you choose the most, REMs or M's? And I told him that, as with most questions, once you get a bit of knowledge surrounding the topic, it just depends. So today, I want to explain what are some, you know, in my mind, good opportunities to use one or the other, REMs or M's. I mean literally, in, in preparation for this video, I, I sat down at a code editor for two days just to get my ideas straight. So don't just take my word for it. You know, crack open your own code editor, roll up them sleeveys, you know, take it for a spin and see what you think. But right now, let me try to teach thousands of people something that I just made up yesterday. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, it was the day before that. In today's example, we're going to be using CodePen. CodePen is awesome because it's available via the webternets and you guys can find it right now. There is a link in the description below. We have a very simple page layout established already. I mean, we have a, a, a headline here, a paragraph, and a button. And what we're going to be doing is looking at how each of these can apply different units to different aspects of their style to make a really good and uh, scalable design. That'll make sense in just a second. Before I start designing any text nodes, I want to establish the fundamental kind of baseline uh, font size for the page. To do that, I target the root element with this special selector. It's like this, R-O-O-T, root. Now that will target the root element, and I'm using SAS, so I don't need any curly braces. And I'll just say font size, and I'm gonna use pixels right now, 16 pixels. Very good, very good. And so when I view compiled, I'm gonna have an error. And the reason I have an error is because using SAS, I, knew to, I need to escape this colon here. Uh, so I'll just put an escape in front of it. Now when I view compiled, you should have root font size 16. So I'm kind of making a point of this because I want you to understand why there's an escape in front of that colon right there. Normally you'll write it without the colon there is root font size 16 pixels. So the root font size is 16 pixels and that will set the kind of like tone for everything else we're gonna be doing. Now that I have the root established, I'm gonna go into the individual text nodes and kind of set the tone for them. And uh, we're gonna start with the H1 and I'll say font dash size, uh, let's do two, three rem. Rems are relative to the root size. So three rems times 16. Three times 16 is 48. So we, we literally have a 48 pixel dimension uh, text size right here for the headline. Hello there, you look nice, well, sort of. Before we go too far, you see how this the text is spreading all the way across the body? I don't like that. So I'm gonna write body, and then I'm gonna give it a width defined in, in rems. So if I say uh, 16 times 40, it would be good. I think that's 640, right? And, uh, and then I'll just do margin 50 pixels auto, center it. Why did I do rem right there? I did rem because if we're gonna be changing our font size, like let's say we're gonna bump this up to 24, our, our, our whole page will scale up. Did you notice that our H1 scaled up to three times uh, the font size? And then our, our even our, uh, body width, which you could say like, oh, that's kind of an, an, an analogous to the grid if you're using a grid in REMS, that would scale up too. So everything just jumped up really fast. Watch this, 16 again. And we're not having any weird resizing and stuff. In fact, let me show you this. This is kind of a cool trick. If I hit star in CSS, that means select everything. And I'll put transition all and uh, 300 milliseconds ease in out. This should be fun. Okay, now let's go back here and say 24 again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Everything's jumping around and animating, that's fun. Uh, 16. Okay, let's go down to this uh, body text. And you know the font size, size, I just want it to be one rem. And I'm doing all of the text nodes themselves in rem. 
and I'll, and I'll continue that pattern with when I go to this anchor tag here. Anchor, actually, what did we call it? I called it button. Uh, I want to do a font size. Why am I putting a zero in the dash? One rem. And nothing has changed. Let me do a few quick other styles to this button to make it look like a button. Uh, text. Now notice that I've used one rem for the text size, the font size of the button. And then for all these other things, I used one pixel. And this is the old Trav speaking. And let's see what would happen if we bump this uh, back up to 24, for example. What happened to this button here? It still looks like this, this border is, is one pixel wide. Well, what if we did this? Border one M. So let's, let's change it back to 16. Okay, it's still ridiculous. So uh, let's see, we have, to do, we have to make a little calculation here. If I want the border to be one pixel at 16 pixels, when like the rem is 16 pixels, then, um, then I have to do one divided by 16, which is 0 0.0625, I think. So that's, that's the M's, but that's based on M's, right? So think about this for a second. This border uh, width is coming from this number, not this number, because it's, because it's M's, not REMs. So if I put it at REM right now, nothing changes because the font size right here is one REM. But what if I put uh, this at, make this all the buttons at four rems. The, the border itself doesn't change even though the button is just so, the, the button text is so crazy big. So that's why I wanna say, I'm gonna make this button, the border, based on M's, right? Because M's are based on the actual font size of this unit. So we're being kind of like atomic here. We have the font size based on rems, which is based on the baseline of the document that we set up. but all the things that are attached to that button, I want them to be on M's because I want them to be associated with the, with the atomic structure of the button itself, right? I don't want the border being, being styled based on the document font sizes. And this is the whole point of the video. The whole emphasis of the whole video is that I'm thinking that the rems should be on text nodes and that M's should be on things attached to the text notes. For example, look at the padding on this button. It's all wrong. That's because it's in pixels. But if I put the padding top as one rem and the padding here is 1.5 rem, it doesn't really change much because rem is associated with the document level kind of styles, the root up here, right? But I don't want the padding of a button to be associated with the root. So Again, I'll change it to M's and look at how much more suited these things are to the button itself. Let's say uh, padding top is gonna be 0 0.8 M's and then uh, you can be 0 0.2. Probably eight is a little bit big, how about seven, six. Good, okay. And now when this, when this button goes up to like four rims, the padding is still proportional to the button itself, right? Let's see if we can do the same with border radius. So let's take these pixels and say if we're gonna have, so one divided by 16 is 0 0.625 and times that by three pixels. That's what we wanna get. That's gonna be 0 0.1875 M's. Now our border radius looks good, big and small. Let's change this back to one rim. See, man, oof, this button, this button is just making me feel so good right now. It's making me feel so good. I love it. Oh, yeah. So the last thing I wanna show you is just how to control these things all to make them really effective on, on mobile. So right now we're working on the desktop. I'm sitting here with my, my big monitor and it's all very big. And 
uh, I want to make this a more comfortable read for people who are going to be on mobile, right? And I don't want them squinting at how small this text is. So I want to change what it normally reads at from 16 back up to 24. Now this is going to be what's normal. And then I want to change it for desktop, kind of override the font size at the, at the desktop level. So I want to say at media um, min width, let's say 800 pixels. And this is just because I have a big screen. I want to show you an example. If it was going to be mobile, probably do like 640 or maybe like 700 pixels, but whatevs. So what are we going to do when the browser gets smaller than 800 pixels? Let's change the font size of the root element to be back to 16. That's when it gets bigger, okay? So when it gets smaller, we move this browser in smaller, we get the nice kind of comfortable reading on your phone. And everything has scaled up, right? Let me put some padding on this. Padding is one rem. Yeah. So everything scales up and it's nice and comfy. So this button looks good in proportion to itself. So I hope that this was a good example of what's been going, going on in my mind about the question of when do you use rims? When do you use M's? And when do you use pixels? These are my weird ideas on the topic. And you know, usually my videos are not so mm, made up, but YOLO. If you enjoyed this video and it was helpful to you in some way in your career or just making your next website, consider becoming a patron of DevTips. What is a patron you say? A patron is someone like this person or that one or these ones. And what they do and what makes them special is they, is they contribute to the production of DevTips and they help this show happen every week. They pledge a dollar amount to the first video of every week and you know they get perks and junk but if you want to learn more, check out patreon.com slash devtips. That's where we're all hanging out right now. So come join us. It's a lot of fun. So check out that link. It's in the description or there's like an annotation or a card or something, but come join us at Patreon. Okay, that's it. Jenny says hello. Keep on hacking.